the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord to be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you never undermine your purpose. As you perfectly provide for all that you create, remove from our way all that is harmful and give us what will profit, that we may share in your invincible grace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson is from the ninth chapter of Zechariah, beginning with the ninth verse. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. The word of the Lord. We will read Psalm 145, beginning with the first verse, responsively. I will exalt you, O God of my King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There is no end to his greatness. One generation shall praise you. I will ponder the glorious splendor of your majesty and all of your marvelous works. They shall speak to the right of your wondrous acts, and I will tell of your greatness. They shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing of your righteous deeds. The Lord is loving to everyone, and his compassion is over all his works. They make known the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power. Your kingdom is everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. Lord, 
first full in those days. The second lesson is from the seventh chapter of Romans, beginning with the 14th verse. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin. For I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law, that is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I do, I, I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being. But I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from the body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the understanding and revealed them to the little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me but my fa by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lonely in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you would consider yourself a worrier? You worry about just every little thing. From, I don't know, uh, what would be a good example? Little, little things to worry about. Um, What's for supper tonight? How many worry about what you had for breakfast, but you can't remember it? <laughs> I'm a... I'm a worrier. At times, I think. I try not to worry. But I'll wake up, how, how many of you done this? You wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning worried about something. Something you actually probably can't even control. You can't have nothing to do with it. But you have to make a decision. One thing as a pastor I worry about, I worry about worship attendance, but I really can't do anything about how many people are here. I guess I could call them. What do you think? If I started like at 6, I could call everybody every Sunday morning. We could put a phone tree out. What do you think? Put a phone tree out, have Roger call everybody every Sunday morning to remind them that we're having church today. That would be something I worry about. I, I write attendance down every week. Church officials worry about attendance because we feel that worship is the core. In my history of life, I have worried about big events. And I've gotten myself so worked up, and I'll see if anybody's like this. I got myself so worked up about it 
is that I actually, the first time around, failed. Especially if it came down to doing something with my hands. Like, I'll just throw an ar uh, army example in. Um, I had the toughest time taking apart the M60 machine gun when I was young. Now, I absolutely, if I wasn't being tested, could take it apart and put it back together again. But put me in a where I had to do it to pass a test, I would get all razzled. Same thing with being a jump master. I knew how to jump out of airplanes, did it hundreds of times. But when it comes to being a jump master and passing the test, it always kind of uh, freaked me out because I worried about it, doing it. How many worry about doing everything perfect? And you worry so much about doing it perfect, you mess it up. We're that way. The next question that we have with today's gospel is that how many worry about your relationship with God? How many of you really put a thought and going, you know what? I am a dreadful sinner, if not by actions, but by thought. You know, when we say thought, word, and deeds, we say thought first, don't we? Thought, word, and deeds. And there's probably, if it hasn't been this week, there might be a time or two where your words weren't as uplifting and building up as maybe they should have been or could have been. Or as they've talked about in, you know, sometimes it's best not to say anything. But we do. <laughs> but we do anyway. So, you know, we could list the Ten Commandments. You know, not a lot of coveting, but probably a little bit. But I live very first commandment, thou shalt have no other gods. Zechariah is dealing with that. What's going on in Zechariah in Zechariah's reading today is that the Israelites are coming back from exile and they're building uh, Jerusalem again. And they're dealing with other gods and they're dealing with themselves and they're dealing with the law and their sin. See, because they had turned away from God and had been carried off and now they're coming back. The God of Israel is bringing them back. And he's talking about there's going to be a new covenant. He's talking about then in his time, but also in the future. I mean, we can't, you cannot read Zechariah 9 and not think of, of Palm Sunday. He is going to ride in, mounted on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. He's going to be humble. And it's going to bring you peace. A whole new kind of relationship through the coming king. And this king, through him, he's going to set them free from those sins. He's going to set them free from the law. What he's going to do in the long run is make it so they don't have to worry about their relationship with God. In the uh, book, Spirituality of the Cross, uh, that many of you are reading, and I'll do a shameless plug, I have more. There's a discussion, there's pointing out, his chaplain in his book wrote, 
about, and I've experienced this many times, and many of you may have experienced it. When someone is very sick and ill, how many, you just, you just start worrying that that loved one is very ill. And where is the first place we put our trust many times? In the miracles of modern medicine. We trust in all that that doctor may know. All the medicines that they may have. And I've seen this with patients as they go past realizing what the doctors can do for them, while at the same time, and it was really illustrated in the, in the book, how the family continues to put all their hope on medicine. And when the medicine isn't working, it creates incredible anxiety and tension. Because they don't know what to do. They can't do anything. Yet the loved one is still very sick. What Jesus is even telling us today in his gospel is that come to me in these times of anxiety. These times in which you don't have any control or idea what to do. For through his blood shed on the cross for us. In which we are connected to and a part of through our baptism and through the bread and wine that we receive every week. We are free from these anxieties. Jesus said, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The line before And that is a peace in which we can't find from all the sleepless nights. If you can find that peace, you will be able to get that rest. If you can let go of that fear. You know, I'm just, I'm just, as I'm processing this, as I was thinking about being able to put the machine gun together, which is really, in essence, of letting go of my anxiety so that I could put a machine gun in here. But that was my calling. That was my vocation. That's what I was supposed to be able to do. In the long run, of all things, everything was all right. My life didn't end at that point. And this is one of the things that this anxiety of illness is. If you just listen to Jesus and come to him, he is the one that will ensure through the cross, he is the one that ensured that eternal peace with the Father. And see, with that knowledge, it doesn't mean that we wouldn't take the medicines and we don't want to get better. But it'll be like, I don't know if I've told this story. I had a pastor friend of mine who, how many's had a heart cath? We've had some heart caths in here. He went in to have a heart cath procedure. Well, he had been, how many's taken Coumadin now? I don't know if they do Coumadin anymore, but it's a blood thinner about 10 years, 15 years ago. 
Uh, so the, having a heart cath if you're on heavy blood thinners is very, makes everyone that is in the waiting room very anxious. So we've waited and waited. This heart cath was supposed to take an hour. I think most of you have had a heart cath. It's taken about an hour. Four hours later, you could just feel the tension in the waiting room. Finally, this doctor comes out a very, very... How many have met a heart surgeons? Heart surgeons are very confident individuals in their skill and capability. And he comes out and he goes, sorry it took so long, but uh, we actually are preparing uh, Pastor Bumgardner now for quadruple heart bypass surgery. Uh, and it's taken us a while. That's how bad his heart was. So he went in for a heart cath, and now he's preparing him. This was, it was started at 9 o'clock in the morning. Now it's 5 o'clock at night, and they're preparing him for quadruple heart bypass surgery. And the doctor goes, and, you know, if we don't do this, we don't think he'll make it to midnight. You want to talk about tension in the waiting room. So we go see Pastor Bumgardner. They said, can we see him before he goes? Because they said he's heavy on Coumadin and he's having quadruple heart bypass surgery. He may bleed to death. Oh, that was part of the discussion. So we go, can we go see him? His wife wants to see him before he goes in surgery because they think this might be the last time we see him alive. So here is Pastor Bumgardner. Pastor Bumgardner is known, how many of you know that Marty is a great joke teller? Pastor Baumgartner was the best joke teller. He way past where you were at. <laughs> He's laying on a stretch gurney. We're walking with him. That's how fast they're moving. They're not even stopping. They're walking with him. And he's telling us a joke. He's the one on the stretcher, and he's telling the joke. I can't remember what the joke was. And then no one laughed. And he looks up at everybody, and he says, I'm the one that's getting ready to have surgery. What's wrong with you people? <laughs> we, and his wife said, well, well, we may lose you, Hugh. He said, well, let's have a word of prayer. And he led the prayer. And then he said, He looked up at us and he says, don't fret, don't worry. I'm walking with Jesus right now. And if I don't make it through surgery, I'm going to be with him for all eternity. And if I do make it through surgery, I get to be with all of you for the rest of my life, however long that's going to be. And you know what? Both are great. He was yoked with the Lord. He knew that him and the Lord were sharing that yoke, and they were walking together, and they were going to go through that together, and no matter what was going to happen, he was going to fulfill God's purpose, and it was going to be glorious. And that is what Jesus is calling on us to do today. Come to him. And he will carry you through those times of great anxiety. And also he'll be with you in those times of great joy, I'm sure. For he went to the cross and shed his blood for us. And he will come to us here in just a few minutes through the bread and the wine as he came to us in our baptisms. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
God has made us his people through baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope. We confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. Almighty and eternal Lord, each Sunday we gather and stand before you, gather in community, looking to free us from our anxieties, anxieties that make us worry about finances, our country, the world. We can't watch the news without worrying about something. Lord, be with us. Come to us. And when we come to you, lift us through these times so that we may find your peace and rest. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty and eternal Lord, illnesses within our family to ourselves many times brings great anxiety. Times in which we look to the world for cures. May your healing presence always be with us and with our family. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Almighty and eternal Lord, great healer, we call on you this day to, to be with those who are anxious, that in these times of anxiety have trouble turning to you. We call on you to be with them and help them through their burdens, through their troubles, their trials. We would call on you to walk with Jim and Cletus and Janet and Steve and Bill, Akeisha and Linda. Nandy and, and Janet and Flora, that they know they can lay all their burdens upon you and find rest. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Almighty and gracious Lord, Most of us are blessed in many ways, especially with mobility. In this great land of ours, we're allowed to go where we want. Yet for many, there comes a point in which they're restricted to their homes and care facilities. They've lost their mobility for many reasons. We call on you to be with them, to those who care for them, and that they, in their times of great loneliness and anxiety, turn to you to 
for rest and comfort and peace in their circumstance. Lord, we lift up to you Tommy and Billy Ray and Buddy and Mary and Bill and Sarah, Becky and Jim and Barbara and Marilyn and Francis and Helen. That they find rest in you. Lord, in your mercy. To your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father. Almighty and ever-living God, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
For those who are not members or need to leave, go in peace and serve the Lord. Besides that, we're going to have a congregational meeting, so please take your seats. <laughs> 